Welcome to Breathe California TV. My name is Terry Trumbull. I'm a volunteer for Breathe California, the lung health organization in the state of California. Uh, each year we help about 150,000 people with breathing difficulties or um, other programs to educate people to protect their health. Today, we're gonna to be talking with Len Mills, uh, um, an entrepreneur who's got a wide variety of different programs that he's doing to uh, cut down on the pollution we have in the air. So the one that we've been working with that's extremely important is uh, converting vehicles to electricity, um, particularly commercial and industrial ones where uh, Diesel in particular is viewed as about as bad an air pollutant as they're in. So Len and I will start talking in about 30 seconds. Stay with us. The different therapeutic methods that we can help our um, very low socioeconomic status um, clients who have no alternatives, no, no anything, and they, they're still about 15 different resources we got out of this that if you have no resources, no service connection, you can still get aid. That they are connected, one encourages the other, and that the process of change from backing off from the tobacco is the same as backing off from any other addictive drug. Everyone can benefit from this training that we just were offered today. I would not take it back. Welcome back. My name is Terry Trumbull. This is uh, Environmental Concerns sponsored by Breathe California. Each week uh, we put on a program designed to help your um, lungs survive modern day society. So um, Len, tell us a little bit about um, what SOZ does. The um, name that's for our screens is right behind you. Yeah, so we're, as you pointed out, we're involved in converting electric vehicles uh, from, uh, on the commercial side, uh, from diesel power principally to uh, electric, uh, electrification of those vehicles. Um, we have a well-established uh, technology associated with that conversion. It's been proven over many years in many different types of vehicles. Um, and then we have a, what we think is an innovative uh, business model as well to help people and, and, and particular fleet operators, commercial fleet operators transition uh, to uh, electric vehicles. So that's that's in a nutshell what SAS does is helps uh, based on some uh, existing technology and uh, proven track record around that, uh, convert people and fleet operators in particular to uh, electric vehicles. So uh, our audience ought to be particularly eager for the programs you do because um, we're breathing the air that comes from all of the diesel trucks you and I have yeah. talked about. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're responsible, I think, uh, including uh, medium duty and heavy duty, uh, you know, north of 50% of the uh, CO2 uh, and other um, uh, nitric oxide and some other uh, chemicals and again the diesel engines have a lot of particulate matter as well. So, so um, eighty-five percent of our air pollution comes from um, mobile sources like cars and trucks. Mm -hmm. Yep, and um, we're a non-attainment area, meaning that we're unhealthy air for um, nine million of us that live in the nine Bay Area counties. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. Um, Santa Clara University did studies that indicate any place within a quarter mile of a freeway or an expressway has unhealthy air, including 900 yep. schools in this county. Yep. So pretty significant stuff. Yeah. So um, and how do, and how do you those freeways have a lot of truck traffic on them, as you know? So that's exactly our target audience. So yeah. I don't even go on 880 during the day because it is so filled with yeah. trucks. Our major uh, freeway from San Jose up to where Interstate heads off eastward. Yeah. Um, so how'd you get into doing this? 
Well, we've been doing it a long time. Um, I think the conversion thing, I think, is really the interesting part of this, which is fairly new. Uh, we uh, have a technology, our team has a technology that basically consists of three uh, kits, what we call kits. One is for the electric motor, one is for the battery uh, module system, and then uh, finally for the charging. And the kits are that we've developed are relatively uh, simple. Uh, we think relatively simple. There's a, a, a total of six wires in each kit uh, that makes them uh, relatively easy to convert uh, vehicles, both new and used. And we can talk about that, how that works. Um, and, and the kits are pre-wired and they're uh, pre-programmed with software, which can also uh, be maintained remotely. So. In terms of uh, why we got into it is the transition time is here. Um, we think this technology uh, makes it uh, viable to do today. It's not a product product that we need to develop any further. Uh, there's always new generations, always new improvements and so on and so forth. But this can be done today. So the time's now. And then if, on the business side of this, um, because of that existing technology, our push is really not on the product at the, at the moment. Again, there will be innovations and, and new technologies all the time, but importantly, on the demand side. So we're looking to uh, uh, build and assemble these trucks for our own usage inside of SAS. So we have a, a servicing and leasing operation uh, in addition to the technology. And then, uh, but also for other fleet operators that may be interested in converting their own vehicle, their own fleets into um, electric uh, uh, versions of that. And we can help partner with them, uh, you know, sell them the kits, train the uh, technicians. They, there is some training required, uh, particularly around the safety protocols associated with a high voltage. Um, so there's, it's easy, relatively easy to do, but it's it still requires some uh, technical training and uh, safety precautions. Um, but that's true with any vehicle, for that matter. Um, and uh, you know, we're, so we're here to partner with them, and, and we're really excited about uh, what we think will be a very uh, 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 strong trend. Electric vehicles are here; they're going to and they're going to continue to be here, and that's a great thing um, uh, for the pollution. And you know, we we're part of that trend, and the time is now. So, if you ask me why I get why we get into this, well, we've been doing it a while, first of all, but second of all. We just think the uh, we're we're at an inflection point with respect to the timing, um, and it's a it's a great uh, uh, business I think to be in. Well, let me be blunt with you. From what you just said, are you encouraging uh, um, people to apply to do franchises with you? And if yes. so, how yep. would they do it? Yeah, that's actually a good point, uh, Terry. So we we think that the way to uh, get this demand going uh, is very local. Uh, if you think about the fleet operators, uh, they uh, typically the me the medium duty fleet operators in particular they 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 work and live and and breathe in a in a specific location, uh, oftentimes around freeways because that's where the logistics are needed. Um, uh, but that's so this is very much a, a kind of a grassroots uh, program. Uh, we have our initial franchise in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, but we are looking to expand that network. It can be easily scalable and replicated in other areas. And that's what we're looking to do. So the commercial fleet operators rely on their trucks for their daily livelihood. This is how they make their own businesses. Uh, so we need to be there with them and partnering with them. Uh, they can't afford a breakdown. They can. Uh, they need uh, immediate servicing. And again, we have this leasing operation, which uh, will help them make that transition. So it's a very local, uh, op very local phenomenon that what we're trying to do here. Um, and we uh, envision uh, multiple franchises or locations all across the country, for that matter. So um, one of the things to control air pollution that ties into this is that California Air Pollution Control Agencies here in Bay Area and Southern California have yeah. put strict requirements on uh, trucks going to and from ports. Yes. Um, 
and I don't know if San Diego or other areas have done it, but it would seem to me that may be a better way than um, trying to address the problem by waiting out the um, normal lifetime of a diesel truck. Yeah, again, we think that these uh, repower or conversions can be done, uh, in, you know, instantaneously. It's it's quite common in the commercial market or the commercial fleet operators that you know they can put two, three hundred thousand miles on a on a truck in, in a matter of a few years. So it's very routine for them actually to replace their engines. Uh, they keep the body, they keep the chassis, they keep the cabs. Uh, however, because of the just the uh, wear and tear on an engine after 200,000 uh, miles, the, the truck is still in good shape and can easily be uh, reused. So they replace the engines. So what we're doing here is rather than replace the diesel engine with another diesel engine, the strategy is to go ahead and do that conversion to the electric uh, at that time. So it's a natural evolution for these trucks to uh, replace their engines. So we're gonna replace them and we're gonna replace them with electric. Of course, we'll take out the fuel tanks and replace it with the batteries, uh, which is another step in the process, but um, that's all part of a, a kind of a normal life uh, cycle of a truck is to replace the engine. So it's nothing unusual. One of the things that's also nice about that, uh, another advantage is it's the same truck. So it's gonna have the same dashboard, same kind of look and feel. It'll be a little quieter uh, and, and not as hot because of the electric motor, but 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 on the other, but it's gonna it's gonna be their truck uh that they're their or their bus for that matter that they're used to operating. So it doesn't really change, doesn't require any new training to learn how to drive it or operate it. It's the same truck, it's just got a different motor. Well, all of this sounds great and Given most of our audience are personal car drivers, why why not do the same for uh, for them? They it can be. Uh, we just think that a underserved market right now is in in is in the commercial area and uh, the, the municipal area as well, including school buses and things like that. So, the truck the the, the difference between a truck and a car or a bus uh, is 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 really uh, the weight. Um, and one of the engineering problems that our technology solves is, is that weight problem. If you think about a car in the scheme of things, it's relatively lightweight. It does not have as much weight as you know a commercial vehicle, which can have tens and 20 and 30,000 pounds of weight on it if it's fully loaded. So you know that's a different kind of engineering um, problem. Uh, most of the electric vehicles that are out there uh, uh, have direct drive to the wheels. Uh, one of the things we're doing as part of the uh, uh, technology is we're keeping the transmission in place, which is actually very, very important in the in the in the truck and bus area because of because of the weight problem. Um, so that's the engineering uh, side of this, and 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 the market is is not as well served, and it's it's a more difficult engineering problem in some sense because of the weight um, than in, than in a car. So that's where we've we focus our attention, it, and it's also the biggest uh, contributor uh, on the on the uh, gas side as well. So, well, um, when Breathe California was supporting um, uh, pollution controls at both the federal and state level, mm -hmm. one of the things I learned to, that just reinforces what you're saying is typical truck is being used for thirty years, yeah, where the lifetime limit. <laughs> Yeah, Our personal that's, cars might be 10 years now, and yeah. that's the longest in the history yeah. of the car. Um, yeah, the old trucks never die. There's an old truck statement about that. You know, old trucks never die. They just keep going. Um, and then, you know, if you think about the pollution controls over the years, they've evolved, but, but there's still plenty of old trucks on the road. And, um, uh, you know, and, and, and California's taking the lead on getting some of those off the road. But, but um that is, uh, it's a different dimension, uh, time dimension uh, with respect to trucks and buses. They last a long time. So we'll be back with Len Mills in about 30 seconds. We're going to take a break for a public service announcement and see you back then. My name is Renee Montez. I've been using the CPAP machine, I would guess, uh, 
10 years. I, I got so accustomed to it, I don't uh, go anywhere without it. I take it with me everywhere. From the moment I put it on, um, I thought it was the greatest thing because the breathing was a lot easier. And uh, I, after using it for a couple nights, I felt uh, a lot of energy. Green California is fabulous. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry Trumbull. Welcome back to Breathe California's TV show, um, Environmental Concerns. I'm pleased to tell you that this is the first show we've recorded for um, Santa Cruz County, which has just been added to our service area. Um, historically, the show is run in San Jose and Campbell, but um, our next two shows will feature two people well known to people in Santa Cruz County, namely um, State Senator John Laird and uh, former uh, Seminole County Supervisor Fred Keeley. So back to uh, Len Mills, who's our guest. Um, I know you had some questions you wanted me to ask, but the one that seems to me the most significant right now is uh, you mentioned when we first started talking that you have about 12 other uh, businesses you've invested in. What other else is going to cut back on um, air pollution? Yeah, uh, so, yeah. So we have, we actually have uh, uh, two different uh, strategies uh, inside the electric vehicle. One is this uh, conversion strategy and uh, that I mentioned, but we also uh, uh, have invested in a charging network uh, as well. We view that as a complementary business. Uh, the, uh, the they may come together or they may work together, um, but fundamentally, that's the other side of the um, electric vehicle space. So we're doing something in charging. Uh, we have a power electronics company that uh, enhances um, solar panels. Uh, and also battery storage for that matter, um, that in a particular type of technology that, that, in, that enhances those, uh, makes the solar panels work in a variety of different environmental conditions, optimizes uh, the efficiency of those panels, um, and also importantly, can be used in, uh, in uh, what are called flexible forms. Um, so it could be not just on vehicles, uh, but it could be on uh, recreational uh, like boats and campers and, and, and things like that. Um, uh, they also have it because of the uh, technology of thin film that they can uh, embed these power electronics into again uh, for things like um, glass and things like that. So it's a wide, wide variety of different forms of solar panels. So that's another one. Uh, we also have a carbon sequestration project uh, that we've uh, uh, sponsored and invested in uh, that does the reverse. It tries to take CO2 out of the air um, through uh, basically forest management on, on a wide uh, forest in the uh, uh, corner of uh, Arizona and New Mexico. So um, we have a wide, wide variety of uh, different activities. We, we invest in early stage companies. Um, many of them do have a tech, most of them have a technological bent to them. Uh, but SAS is the one that I'm here today to talk about. Uh, this one is one that we're very excited about and, and uh, getting started with. So sequestration is not exactly a term most of the public has heard about. No. Okay. What is the carbon sequestration all about? So you're taking CO2 out of the air uh, as a way to think about it. Uh, plants That's natural. That's technique to cut back on global warming. Yes, very much so. Um, the, uh, the technology angle to that is really a forest management uh, question uh, or a problem. It turns out that uh, younger trees uh, relative to their size, take in more CO2 than older trees. So the idea is to be prudent in your management of the forest, uh, basically uh, replacing the trees in a, in a natural progression from the younger trees to the older trees. And when you're harvesting the timber, 
uh, you want to be judicious in how you do that. And you can optimize that. You get uh, carbon tax credits uh, for, the, for the economic incentive, including by the CARB, uh, but also other jurisdictions as well. Um, so that's it's the idea of the business side of that is to take advantage of this um, difference in the tree age in order to maximize the amount of CO2 that you uh, sequester or take out of the atmosphere. So I have a good friend. I'm switching to you on um, electric storage now. Okay. I have a good friend who just had um, 20 panels for a solar energy collection put in her right. room. Yeah. And um, three um, batteries that I was amazed at how small they were. Yeah. So what would your enhancement uh, techniques offer her? What benefits for your services? Well, we're not we're not directly in the in the storage business ourselves. Uh, where again, we have the one uh, the, that could optimize help optimize the store the batteries uh, storage systems. Uh, I mentioned that earlier. Um, our vehicles need batteries too uh, uh, to uh, store. So um, I think the battery technologies and the the size of it uh, will continue to improve. That seems to be a trend. Uh, we are not currently in that uh, business ourselves. Uh, we're a consumer, like your like your friend. We're a consumer of batteries. So um, my um, wife. Uh, parents lived very close to a truck stop, which was a major regional facility in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And I was just astounded at how much business they did in a wide variety of areas. Are um, you contemplating you're going to be able to sell those places on high speed charging? Yeah, well, the, the, the type of charging that... Um, you know, we help uh, the, the operators uh, work with, or, you know, it depends on, it's kind of a use case. In some cases, the fast charging is needed given their uh, logistics and, and their uh, business models. Um, in other cases, it's not needed. So it's really a business use case about the type of charging that they need. If you think about an operator who works during the day, let's say, and drives their truck, uh, and then uh, parks it, uh, you know, overnight, then they can, they can charge it overnight. In contrast, if you've got um, uh, people that are uh, in need of more rapid charging because they're, they're going longer distances, um, then, then that wouldn't work. So it's a use case. Our, our uh, technology supports either fast charging uh, or level two charging, either one. Uh, so it doesn't, uh, it's not a business restriction for us. Uh, and we would, again, it, de it depends on the needs of the, of the fleet operator themselves, uh, what kind of charging they need. I have a friend in a um, new business here in California. Mm -hmm. uh, cannabis growing and cannabis products are recently, recently uh, legalized now in 26 different states. Yeah. Um, so I'm leading into new vehicles. They need a truck to shuttle uh, between numerous dispensaries they run or uh, yeah. other services related to their manufacturing. Uh, yeah. Is this system that, uh, how would you market to those people? Yeah, I mean, anyone that has, I think they're, they're a great case uh, that, in the sense that typically uh, those uh, would have a defined route, um, you know, that they need to deliver to each day. They say, I have to hit these uh, five or six uh, dispensaries. I'm making up a number right. here, but uh, but they have a defined route. They know where they're going. Um, and again, they go out and they make their deliveries. Uh, they come back, uh, they charge up for the next day and, and they go back out. And that's true really for any kind of, uh, defined route, whether it be a, a bus route, another, it, you mentioned cannabis, but it, it could be delivering furniture, it could be delivering anything. So anything of that nature is a prime candidate uh, for uh, using uh, electric vehicles. Because in some sense, you don't worry about, as much about the charging. If you know where you're going and you know when you're coming back and how far it is, that's, that's the key uh, for their business. Uh, 
So if, if, it's, if that's unpredictable, then then you don't have the same predictability as you would with a gas station. Um, but um, you know that's 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 a trade-off. These these trucks are built for range, though. Um, you know, uh, we expect them to be able to handle most most needs of most commercial, uh, particularly local commercial operators. So um, I'm buying a brand new uh, truck. Um, how much are, is the extra cost? Mm -hmm. You know, presumably um, I'm eager just to get out and drive the truck. Yeah. Um, not to have to pay thousands more to add um, a cleaner electrical system, but it's still adding to my overhead. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a bit of a sticker shock. Uh, the cost, the upfront costs are still high. That's partly why we're. Uh, if you think about the upfront costs of an electric vehicle, uh, it's it's a combination of the vehicle itself, uh, but in addition, the energy that you're eventually going to use. Uh, that's all built into the upfront cost. Of course, you save money over time by not having those uh, fuel prices, uh, gas and diesel prices. Uh, but that's a that's an overtime saving. So that's why, and that that upfront cost, you know, is a bit of a sticker shock uh, for people. Uh, most of that, by the way, most of that cost is actually in the form of the batteries. That's where the uh, fifty to seventy five percent of that upfront cost comes from, and that that is a differential. You don't pay that upfront uh, with a gas or diesel engine. Um, so our, the business model is again to ease that transition uh, through leasing or some other form of seller financing, including just the batteries themselves, which is the biggest uh, cost component. Um, and that we think that'll ease the transition. Um, overall, over time, you're going to save money. I know it's hard for people uh, to grasp that up front, but, but over time, it is a cost savings, but you do have to, there's more out of pocket. And we're trying to help with the out of pocket uh, side of this as well on the business side. Well, with gas prices, the way they are now, it's Hard to imagine a business that's not aware of. Yeah, the and these saving. the trucks, the trucks that we're dealing with, you know, get a five or ten, you know, miles per gallon. So it's and they're diesel, which is a you know an extra dollar, dollar and a half on top. So it's it's quite expensive on a daily basis for these people. So you can quickly make up that cost, actually. So Lynn, we probably have forty five seconds left. What's your uh, summary of? our discussion? Well, we're looking for people to join us. Uh, we're looking in particular for fleet operators that may be interested in our uh, conversions. Uh, uh, we have a website if they want to drop their uh, contact information there. It's sazev.com. They can drop their contact information. We are uh, taking orders uh, from people and we, our motto is we're taking orders or we're taking names and we're kicking gas. So I'm going to leave people with that, that motto. So just Quickly, um, I forgot to mention, I think you've done a conversion here, school bus somewhere. In yes, Canada. yeah, we've done all kinds of different vehicles. Uh, we've done school buses, uh, we've done, so we're doing we, box. Where at box. In the county? Uh, the school bus is in production, it was actually in Florida, uh, not in California. So we did a, a school bus conversion for a school district in Florida. Um, but we're, 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 we've, again, we, we see ourselves everywhere. We'd love to do one in California as well. So Len, thanks for joining us. And on behalf of Breathe California, we're real happy with the contributions you're making to a cleaner air for all of us. Thanks again. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Enjoyed it. Thank you, Terry. Bye.